Now that we have the entire word put together, this tutorial is going to talk about some additional uh, things that you can add, start to add to your image. Um, the first thing that you can do though is delete your smart guides. So if you look at these uh, smart guides here on the uh, sides, these lines that were showing me how tall to make my image, I can get rid of those now since I don't need them. So I'm just going to click on it and hit delete on my keyboard and that will get rid of those smart guides just so they're out of the way so I don't need to um, see those anymore. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is add a border around each of my letters, so a stroke. Um, to do that I'm going to click on my letters, so holding down shift I can select all of them. And then I'm going to click where it says stroke on the far right over here, which is just another word for border. Um, and I'm going to adjust the weight, so uh, the higher the uh, weight is adjusted on the stroke, the thicker the outline around your uh, letters will be. Something else that you can adjust with the stroke is the type of outline that you want. So if you want it to be just a solid, plain border outline around it, you can select that. Um, you can choose uh, some of these different dashed lines around your border. Um, you could have a line that is thicker on the top and thinner line on the bottom. So find one that you like for your image to go with. Um, and then once you choose uh, the stroke that you like, we'll move on to the next step. The next step, or the next edit that you can make to your border or stroke, um, is looking at some of the other settings here. So where it says gap color, if you chose um, one of these different uh, settings that has kind of a space between the lines, if you select where it says gap color and choose a color, that will fill in space inside of your border. Um, for now, I'm just going to leave mine at none, but you can select a color if you'd like. Um, then I'm going to, instead of having a black border, I'm going to go over to where it says color and see if there's anything different that I might like to um, add. So starting out, you'll notice where the color is, that it has this big box and then the box that's just the thin kind of outline or stroke. Um, this thin outline represents the stroke, while if I had this bigger box selected, this is the fill. Um, but since we're just focused on working with the stroke right now, I'm going to click on the thin outline for the stroke and select a color, so I might want to use uh, maybe a darker blue for mine. And then as soon as you choose uh, the color that you want, we're going to start looking at adding a background color. So we're going to move on from the stroke, so I'm going to click this to hide the color. Um, and then I'm going to use my selection tool and click off of my letters just to get rid of the uh, selection or the outline around my letters. And I'm going to start by adding a rectangle where I want my background to be. Um, so I'm going to use this rectangular tool over here, so not the tool with the X through it, which is the frame tool, but I'm just going to use the rectangle tool. And before I decide where I want that rectangle or where I want that background color to be, I'm going to go over to my layers and add a new layer. Uh, that way I have um, my layers separated so I can arrange and move around the different layers. Now that I have my new layer added, I'm going to click on it and move it below my first layer. That way when I create this background, it's going to be behind my letters. Um, I can even double click to give this a name so that I know that it's my background. And I'm going to hit OK, so now my layer is labeled correctly. Um, and I can even lock my letters just so those don't move around. And then I'm going to click where I want to put my background and drag across the screen here and let go. And you'll notice it's just creating right now an outline, so I need to fill that with color. So I'm going to select color on the far right, and you have the two different options for color. You could create a stroke or just an outline around your background, or you could fill the entire rectangle with color. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to click around here until I find a color that uh, works well with the image, so I might go with the light blue. And then I'm going to click on my stroke and create an outline color. So I'm going to try and use that same color blue that I used um, previously. And I might want to make that stroke stand out a little bit more so it's a little bit thicker. Um, now that I have this small background, the next step or the next kind of addition that you can add to your image is adding a background texture. To add my background texture, I'm going to add a new layer again. So I'm going to click New Layer, I'm going to lock my background layer, and move this new layer below my background, and I'm going to rename that texture so that I know that I have the right layer selected. So I'm going to be putting my texture picture in the background here. Um, 
before you place your image, make sure you make a frame the size of your background texture that you want to uh, fit into the background here. So I'm going to make it my entire page, even though it goes past the margin. Um, I'm going to make sure that it kind of goes outside of what I have for my box here so that it fills the background. Um, and then once you have your frame created, you can select your frame and then place your new image. Now I'm going to place my texture picture. So I'm going up to File and then Place. And then I saved my image on the desktop. So I'm going to find where that's at, hit Open, and then it fills the background with my picture. picture. Now that the background picture is added, you might notice that it is a little bit distracting from the word itself. Um, so I would go in and edit your background picture a little bit, make sure that it kind of fades into the background. So to do that, I'm going to click with two fingers on my background image, go to Effect, and there's a couple of different things uh, you can do in InDesign, but I'm going to use Transparency. And I'm going to take the opacity down. That way it's kind of see-through so it doesn't stand out as much. Just so I have a picture, but it's more um, kind of hidden in the background. So my letters really stand out. Um, the last thing that you could add is text to your image. So maybe adding a quote. Um, so I'm going to start out and unlock my background image. And I want to make a little bit more room for a quote. So I'm going to bring that uh, bottom part of my box down to make more space. And I'm going to click on text and click and drag across the area where I want my quote to go. So now that I have a text box created, um, I found a quote online that I'm just going to paste. So I'm going to hit Command V for paste, and it pasted the quote from online. And now I'm going to um, kind of edit my text. So to edit the text, make sure you highlight it. Um, and then I'm going to change the size. So I'm going to make it a lot bigger than size 12 here so it fills the page more. Um, you can change the font, so find a font that looks nice with your um, theme that you're going with. And you can also adjust a couple other things. You can adjust the spacing, so between the letters, if you want it to really fit all the way across your uh, word or your area. Um, but go ahead and play around with some of the uh, different settings up here. You can change the color. Um, Find some of the settings that work the best for your specific image, since every uh, image will be slightly different. The last edit that you can practice and experiment with um, before your final image is adding a drop shadow. If you select your, um, your letters, so I'm going to hold down shift and click on each of my letters here. And then I'm going to click with two fingers so that these options come up. And I'm going to go to Effects. And in effects, there's a couple of other um, things you can experiment with, but for now I'm just going to click Drop Shadow. And I'm going to um, play around with some of these settings for the Drop Shadow. You can change the angle or direction your shadow's at. Um, you can change the spread, so making it a little bit thicker so it's a little more visible. And then you can hit OK and you'll see that your shadow is added to your images. Uh, so go ahead and experiment with some of these settings and make sure you're not doing exactly what I have here on the screen, but doing something um, a little bit different and something that's your own.